Hi, I'm Josh. You can find me on Twitter at Dreadhelm. And today, I'm going to tell you about my favorite tabletop RPGs that aren't Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition from Wizards of the Coast. Now, first off, to be clear, I'm not here to knock 5e d and I've played it and ran games with it since it came out in 2014, and I like it. It's a good game, but it's not the only game out there. So, if you want to try to explore the wider world beyond 5th, 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, I'm going to give you a quick elevator pitch on three other fantasy role-playing games I personally really love. I'll break down some of what sets them apart, and from there, you can decide if you want to play them. First up, we've got Old School Essentials by Gavin Norman from Necrotic Gnome. This game is based on the 1981 basic and expert box sets for Dungeons & Dragons, created by Moldvay Cook & Marsh. It's a rules-light, stripped-down, very simple system that emphasizes exploration and clever problem-solving. This is an old-school game, so there's no skills, feats, or anything like that. Combat's fast and deadly, and you get way more experience for gold than for killing monsters. There are mechanics for exploration that increase the tension and sense of danger you should have experiencing. You should have exploring dangerous wilderness and monster-filled holes in the ground. The design principles of the game make it so a murder hobo approach isn't very productive and will probably just get you killed. The game rewards clever problem solving and resourcefulness well beyond the limits of your bare bones character sheet. Old School Essentials has become a favorite of the old school renaissance for a few reasons. First, the BX rules are very easy to hack and modify if that's your thing. Second, it's designed for easy use. The presentation's wonderful with layout, emphasizing ease of reference and usability at the table with minimal flipping around and searching. For example, the main tables you'll need to reference are on the end papers of the books. And whether you prefer the intuitive simplicity of modern ascending armor class, or you like to keep it authentically old school and use Thacko and ascending AC, the rules allow for either just as easily. Third, it comes from the time before additions, when you could easily pick up a basic D&D module and run it in an advanced C&D game, and vice versa, with no conversion needed. As a result of all this, the OSR as a whole shares broad compatibility, and Old School Essentials is kind of the baseline for that. So, there's a ton of modules and support for it, both old and new, official and unofficial. If that's too basic for you, and you want a little more, there's an advanced expansion for Old School Essentials, which brings in a lot of options like additional races and classes, while still being quick and easy to run and play. The game comes in a few different formats, from box sets of modular booklets to a number of different rule psalms. But if you want the entire game, classic and advanced, all you need are the OSE Advanced Fantasy Players Tomes and Referee Tomes. Next up, there's Hyperborea by Jeffrey Telanian from Northwind Adventures. This is another old school game, but with a very cool twist. This one's a mix of old school rules, basically a tidied up AD&D, with an awesome setting baked in. The game is based on the weird swords and sorcery and science fantasy of Robert E. Howard, Clark Ashton Smith, and H.P. Lovecraft. Imagine Conan the Barbarian meets the Cthulhu Mythos on a lost continent of Earth that slipped into a kind of alternate dimension. The rules are 90% the same as Old School Essentials just with a few additions and twists here and there. Still pretty rules light, but there are more race and class options and combat is more robust, for example. It's the setting of Hyperborea that really sets it apart. Since the game takes place on Hyperborea, a fantastical lost continent of Earth like Atlantis, Lemuria, or Mu, every PC is a human. This gives it big classic swords and sorcery vibes. The difference isn't whether you're a human elf or dwarf or whether you're a Viking, a Pict, Roman, or Atlantean or something like that. There's weird alien technology, pantheons of elder gods and great old ones like Cthulhu and Sathagua, and in addition to all the normal sorts of D&D type monsters like ogres and goblins, there are bizarre cosmic horrors like Migo and Shoggoths to face. The current edition comes divided into two hardcovers, a player's manual and a referee's manual. 
along with an atlas of Hyperborea. There are a bunch of really cool, very nicely produced adventure modules and other game aids like a referee screen available from Northwind Adventures website, Hyperborea.tv. Last but not least, we've got Castles and Crusades by the Chenault brothers, Stephen and Davis, and Matt Golden from Trollboard Games. This is another old school game, actually one of the very first made at the beginning of the old school renaissance in the early 2000s. But this time, it's all about combining old school feel and modern game mechanics. This is the game that Gary Gygax said would have been third edition AD&D if he'd done it. And it really is, in my opinion, the modern spiritual successor to Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. In fact, the name is a reference to Gary Gygax's original wargaming club, the Castles and Crusades Society. So, what makes it modern? Well, it does away with Thacko and Descending Armor Class in favor of Ascending AC and a modern, unified mechanic based on rolling high on a d20. If you're used to playing 5th edition D&D, it's going to feel very familiar with a smooth, easy learning curve. In fact, if you already know how to play 5e, you'll pick this up very quickly and easily. What makes it old school? First, it doesn't have skills. Instead, it has a very simple system for, called the Siege Engine, where task resolution, character abilities, and saving throws are all based on attribute checks. You have prime and secondary attributes based on your class and choices you make creating your character. If you want to do something that needs a roll, then you make a Siege check by rolling a d20, adding your ability modifier for that relevant attribute, add your character level, and you're trying to beat a target number. The target number is modified by the GM called a Castle Keeper based on its difficulty, but the base is 12 if it's a prime attribute and 18 if it's a secondary attribute. That's it. It's a very simple and elegant system in that way, but it's still able to deal with all the things that modern D&D players expect the game to be able to do. At the same time, combat is very fast and deadly. You get to pick one action to do on your turn, and you declare that action before you roll initiative for the turn. This means everyone can't just dissect combat and make perfect optimal decisions on tactics with perfect turn-by-turn -turn information. Instead, combat feels lively, unpredictable, chaotic, exciting, dangerous, and deadly. It also has a deep, rich, and beautiful setting called the World of Aired. It reminds me a lot of the original Greyhawk setting, with all the depths of settings like Forgotten Realms or RuneQuest Glorantha. It's fully fleshed out in a number of books, modules, and box sets. Finally, it's important to note one last thing about Castles and Crusades. It's a game that's more than 20 years old, but there are no additions. The core books, the Player's Handbook, Monsters and Treasure, and Castle Keeper's Guide are pretty much the same if you're using the slick new printings with the AD&D-esque tribute covers, or the printings from 10 or 20 years ago. If you see a Castles and Crusades supplement or module, you know without a second thought that it's fully compatible with what you've already got. The essential core books are the Player's Handbook and Monsters and Treasure. The Castle Keeper's Guide is optional, but honestly it's one of the best GM guides I've ever seen. So if you want to try it out, you can get free PDFs of earlier prints of the PHB and Monsters and Treasures from the Trollord Games website. There's also a little box set of the basic rules in a set of digest-sized saddle stitch booklets like the original D&D White Box. This classic box set has the basic game and it's a great place to start. So that's it. If you're looking to switch it up and try something new, these are all games that I'd highly recommend. There are plenty that I could recommend as well, like Dungeon Crawl Classics, Call of Cthulhu, RuneQuest, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Maybe I'll talk about some of those in a future video. If you've made it this far, please like and subscribe. But for now, thanks for watching and happy gaming.